Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live from E3, recorded June 15th, 2010, live from the show floor. Twit's live coverage of E3 is brought to you by Ford and Voice Activated Sync, featuring true hands free calling, turn by turn directions, 911 assist, and more. Available exclusively on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. For more details, visit SyncMyRidePodcast.com. Hi, I'm Leo Laporte. We're live at E3 2010 at the Los Angeles... <laughs> oh, my God, it's Brian Brushwood. You didn't see that one coming, did you? <laughs> We're live at the Los Angeles Convention Center. This is a big show, an amazing show. E3's gone through some ups and downs, but it is on, He's baby. Back with a vengeance. The lines, there were three lines all the way deep, curved all the way around the side. There was some kind of flash mob event to promote the Toy Story 3 game. Everything is over the top. This is the E3 I love and remember. Awesome. We're going to have a great time. We're going to spend two and a half hours inside right now. Before we go, though, let's thank the folks at Live View for making our live stream possible and really thank the forks, folks at Ford for making this possible. They're paying for the whole darn thing. Ford, of course, and that amazing Ford Sync. Oh, I love this. True hands-free dialing, turn-by-turn -turn directions, 911 assist and more. Check it out at your local Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury dealer or go online to SyncMyRidePodcast.com and take a look at it. I drive a Ford Mustang, 2010 Mustang with a Sync in it, and I love it. You're going to love it, too, so check it out. Ford Sync. You ready, Brian? Oh, absolutely. First thing we got to get started on, Leo, is we made an appointment to get hands-on with the brand-new Rock Band 3. Yes! <laughs> now, do you have a favorite instrument? You played the other rock bands, right? Yeah, the only time I played rock band was with Jonathan Colton. We oh. played Still Alive on the stage of the Great American Music Hall. I played bass because it was the easiest thing to play, and I still failed three times. Veronica saved me, but I never did get very good at that game. By the way, wait and just name drop that. Oh, I only played it the once with Jonathan Colton live <laughs> on stage. Great American Music Hall. Yeah, right? <laughs> Some of the big news about Rock Band 3, of course, the, there's a 25-key keyboard coming out and a pro mode where apparently you can actually play real guitar. They're blurring the lines between it being just a rhythm game and actually being a usable way to learn how to play an actual instrument. How do you play real guitar, though? I mean, is it just the rhythm like it is in rock band, or is there actual notes? I, I have absolutely no idea. From what I hear, uh, you know, I play a little bit, enough to impress my family. That's all I really need. <laughs> You're going to impress me, because I can't play any. <laughs> Here we go. We're coming up to the entrance. You go up the escalators. It says, welcome to the Electronic Entertainment Expo. Boy, a lot of signage for Tron Evolution, and apparently the backstory. Wait, I got to do this. Oh, go for it. He's not any kind of program sock. He's a user. All right, I just had to do that. I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> oh, look at this. You know I have a soft spot for Tron. I'm nuts for Tron. Oh, look at this light cycle. Come here. We got to see this real quick. I know we're in a hurry. We're going over to see Rock Band 3, but look at that light cycle. I have to say, this is a much more visual, much more fun show than CES because it's entertainment. Yes, absolutely. There's, it, this is all about the over-the-top imagery. It's about taking, you know, if, uh, think about it. CES, um, you know, you got a bunch of your Walkmans and your iPods and your handhelds, and, but then, you know, this is for games. They want it to be exciting. They want it to be over-the-top. They want it to be something special. Oh, we've got to come back and check out. they got some I want to play. thing here. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the, that's the light cycle that was actually in Tron Legacy, so that's an actual film light cycle. Ooh, look, they got a light floor. You could play Tron on the floor. Here's the Xbox 360 Connect. Of course, Microsoft's big announcement. What did Sony say today? Uh, you know, I have not checked in on the Sony situation at all, but back to the Nintendo. I know it sounds like Nintendo's really stolen the show. 3D. Well, the 3D, and plus, it's retroactive. You'll be able to patch older games and play them in 3D. Here's the important part, without the glasses. This is, I've said this for the longest time, uh, I understand that when you're in a theater, you got to put on the glasses as part of an environmental experience you're having, but the rest of the time, nobody wants to wear the glasses at home, especially when you're limited on the number of them that you can have. They're awkward. They induce headaches in some people. The way to win at 3D is when you could crack that code and make it without the glasses, and that's exactly what they're doing with the handheld. Did you see it? I mean, does it really look 3D? I did not see it, but by but again, one of the nice things is you hold the placement of it, so as long as your eyes are positioned correctly, it looks like you've gone straight through. 
Uh, and second of all, harmonics is over here. We're going to go straight through. Absolutely. By the way, they also are supporting Hollywood releases, so you'll be able to watch down the road a movie like Avatar. That's interesting, isn't it? And be able to watch it on your handheld in 3D without the glasses. No, now, is this a Fender Stratocaster Rock Band controller? Pro controller. This is what I wanted to see. This is what I wanted to see. There's, I guess, there's buttons in there, but you don't really. It looks like maybe the recessed uh, frets. They've got the four buttons on front, but they're not colored. Oh, yeah, there they are. Okay, so. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's the one. Okay, so that's the actual the controller one, two, three, on there, yeah. Four, yeah. So it's wow. a real guitar with a controller. Now, if the music from the guitar goes through and you're still playing rock band, that might be kind of cool. Uh, you know, I think so. And plus, it looks like uh, with that many buttons, you'll be able to actually create all the chords. You'll be able you'll learn proper fret positioning. Uh, you'll toughen up your fingers. You'll get the calluses. Do you play guitar? No, but there's no calluses on this. Look, it's all plastic strings. Yeah, he's got a <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get made of diamonds. <laughs> uh, Ubisoft also had a very impressive presentation. Here's uh, Sean White skateboarding. They went all out with celebrity appearances last night. Um, this is a tough franchise to crack. A skate is such a such a hot title. Skate Three just came out. Uh, yeah, and actually, I never really got into the skate games myself, but I do know it's. Re <laughs> what's funny is uh, I've got a bunch of. Um, I guess sass mouth friends because I asked them what I should what I should do at E3 and a bunch of them said ask Ubisoft about their draconian DRM. Yeah, we hate the DRM, don't we? In fact, maybe we should do that. Let's go over here and see if I could find. Oh, you're gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's find Mr. Yeah. Draconian. <laughs> Mr. Draconian DRM. Well, in fact, I wouldn't buy a Ubisoft game these days because it has to check in with the Ubisoft server right. before you can play the game. On the other hand, that Sean White looks pretty awesome. Well, and of course, you don't really deal with that with the console games because they've got built-in DRM. But the, uh, apparently, like even games like uh, that are bought over the Steam network, which already has pretty good DRM, apparently if it can't radio back to HQ for the, uh, for the update at Ubisoft, it just won't let you play your own game. Hey, wait a minute. We're over here. <laughs> I, yeah, this is a one-of-a-kind of experience because I know a lot of people have never even been to E3 before, but we are, uh, we're your, we are your vessel. We are here to go wherever you want. This is uh, Rift. Rift, Plains of Talara, know absolutely nothing about it. Uh, ends, end of Nations. Traditionally, E3 booths have always been really over the top. Look, they've got a smoke machine. They've got a wild jungle tree lit lighting up giant screens. They've got the game itself. In fact, the smallest part of the booth is that 50-inch plasma that has the game on it. <laughs> Everything else is all about atmosphere, feeling, excitement to draw you over here. Uh, you know, you, it's it's almost a problem because uh, when you spend enough money on the booth, you can make uh, let's say less than AAA titles look pretty exciting. Right. Not anyone can go into E3. It's open to the trade only. That means you either have to be trade press, you have to be a reseller of video games, you have to be a maker of video games, and they're pretty strict about that. Also, you have to be over 17, and there are no kids in here. And the reason they did that is in previous E3s, it was open to the public and it was open to kids, and nobody who was in the trade got anywhere near the game. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, one of the things people, if they are complaining that we're moving around too much, that we're seeing too much, that's very much what the experience is. When you walk in the door, it is an assault of the senses of lights, of color, of sound. And speaking of which, I think they're filling up over at Rock Band. Yeah, so if, if what they want is a little more in-depth experience, let's actually go and experience the Rock Band 3 launch. Now, I don't know what this experience is going to be like. One, very frequently at trade shows, you get these events where they've set up a theater and, and you stand in a theater and watch. So we'll see what this is like. This may be bad. If it is, we'll make an exit. That's okay. You got, we'll very subtly take our bright lights and, uh, oh, this is impressive looking. You know, the <laughs> truth is, this is really a little bit like a funeral. Yeah, <laughs> which is always the atmosphere that you want to create. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. This is me and my friend Brian Brushwood. We're here at the theater. So if we could take a moment to talk a little bit more about uh, the Nintendo press party um, uh, earlier on. The new uh, 3DS, a uh, couple of other exciting things, the camera in the 3, you know, because they've had uh, since the DS. Three cameras in this one. Uh, oh, is there three? Well, I knew there was two to create stereoscopic images. And then one front-facing camera. Oh, no kidding. See, I, I, I wonder how long until they throw just throw a phone feature in there, because that's something I'd let my daughter run around with, so I could call her. RP to T. Uh, right we're about we to begin. <laughs>
That's a new feature. So we just got a demonstration of the ability for players to leave the game and then come back in. Uh, this is this is their first demo. You know what? It's great. In a way, this is so unpolished. I like it. Well, it. It is. It's raw and honest because I'll tell you, this is the experience that we will have when, we play, when we play the game. Uh, and they're clear. The game. They're, oh, come on. Oh, come on. No. With an audience. Jeez. Oh, dude, with an audience. That'll be intense. <laughs> That's awesome. So what happened was is the, the base was in lefty mode. Right. And so uh, even, I'm sure they're all talented. Yes. 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 <laughs> It is very much like it is at home. You're all stringed guitars. They're all using the uh, button guitar. I don't know if the camera can focus in on it, but you can see the, the keyboard on the left actually shows you all of the keys, and you're able to actually play the keyboard just like, I mean, you're actually learning the parts. I'm, Knowing harmonics, they're making that's sure. That's pretty cool. See, that's the one thing I didn't like about these types of games is you're learning an, an obscure skill, but now you're actually learning music. Right, exactly. And that's one of the things uh, I think that the rock band franchise can mature into becoming a legitimate teaching tool because there are so, you know, I went to Guitar Center and I was shocked at how many rock band peripherals and systems they were selling because rock band's what gets a lot of kids interested in having their own band. This is cool. Let's go see some more stuff. Yeah, We're live from E3. We want to thank the folks at Ford, by the way, for making this possible. Probably right now they're wondering, what have we done? <laughs> but I'll tell you what, if you love music, if you love entertainment, if you love your car, you got to love the Ford Sync with its amazing, true hands-free calling. It even works, by the way, on my Android machine, which, you know, my Android phone, which a lot of Bluetooth doesn't. It's got turn-by-turn -turn directions, 911 assist. You can call for songs by track name, by artist, by genre. Ford Sync, it's amazing. You'll never take your hands off the wheel or your eyes off the road, and yet you're living, you're getting to do work, you're getting to get, do, get stuff done, you're getting entertained. I love Ford Sync, I know you will too. Why don't you try it at your Ford, Lincoln, or Mercury dealer or visit the Sync My Ride podcast website, syncmyridepodcast.com. Also, thanks to Live U for the live streaming pack, which seems to be working. We're actually, uh, it's actually working. Yeah, we were a little bit worried. There are so many devices. We had our own Steve Jobs moment where I wanted to shout, everybody, put turn your. Turn off your Wi Fi. Uh, turn off your Wi Fi. Tell you what, we're right in front of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood right now. Maybe take a look at some oh, of the. Oh, man, I'm excited about this. I love Assassin's Creed. It's one of my favorite games. You know, it was such a neat idea and such an unusual construct that, that allowed you to. It's simultaneously future and and very very retro, you know, Renaissance era. Yeah, that's the beauty of Assassin's Creed too. And of course, it, when we went to Egypt, we had been playing Assassin's Creed the the first one, and it really felt like we were in Assassin's Creed. In fact, Henry tried to run up a couple of walls. Yeah, I was about to say I could just see you diving from a building into a bale of hay. Did not end well. <laughs> but no, this is a game where a great storyline, some really good gameplay, and an amazing world, a very vivid, real three, uh, you know, a full world, really make this a fun game. You know what we. Wait a minute, hold on. Let's 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 ask some of these guys who are playing Connect if we can find somebody playing Connect if they like it. This might be a good chance to see a real person's reaction to Connect. Oh, maybe they're not letting real people do it. No, look, they've put them in a giant fishbowl. They're in the hamster cage. You can't actually uh, you can't actually go in there. So it looks like the uh, uh, specifically it looks like they got four titles. There four titles they're showing off here. The uh, the Connect Adventures with the River Rafting game, Connect Sports, Joyride, and Connectimals, so you can pretend to love a furry creature that doesn't exist. If you get a chance to play it, I think people will like it if they get a chance to play it. I'm sorry they're not doing that on the show floor. I guess it would just be too dangerous. Oh, sure. I actually, you know, that's a good point. And that actually, I wonder if that'll factor in with the device itself. Is there's a liability concern? They don't want people jumping and hopping and flopping all around here. I wonder how long till we, just like when the Wii came out and we heard stories of people destroying their televisions, throwing their Wiimotes all around. I wonder how long until we have people landing on glass coffee tables. I think also the issue probably, Brian, is that the camera, it's smart, but how, if you have a thousand people milling around behind you, I don't know if it's smart enough. Well, you know? I mean, here we go. We got an actual demo to get hands-on with E3, I mean with E3, the Rock Band 3. Um, but again, it looks like everybody's only playing The Power of Love, so I don't know, I don't know if they've released the rest of the set list on there yet. The opening demo clearly played uh, the doors break on through. That was awesome, by the yeah. way. I have to say, that was a very good ad. One of the things that Rock Band and Guitar Hero have done is really re revive 
the careers of people like Huey Lewis, who frankly is not selling a lot of records lately. I'm sure this will sell a lot of back catalog. By the way, I am shocked listening to traditional radio how many songs are on the rock band. I mean, I don't know if it's a case of art imitating reality, but there's a lot of songs that I had totally forgotten ever existed, and all of a sudden they're on the radio all the time. Uh, but this is, ah, here we go, Deus Ex. It's been a while since we've seen a Deus Ex game. One of the things that defined the original Deus Ex was you worked for a government or an intergovernmental agency similar to the UN, and of course uh, you found yourself having to make agonizing decisions about what side to take between a number of factions. You know, this is going over the uh, internet. That's what's interesting about these. These servers are rendering this and then shipping it over to the on live player. Here's the little player. You don't need a lot of hardware. It's on your big screen TV, and their servers are rendering it. Now, there's been a lot of controversy over this. Can, can, I, can I tell you, I did not even realize that this is being played over, over on live. So uh, I tell you, I really want to know if there's any detectable lag when you do it. You can see the setup is blindingly simple. We've got an Ethernet port. We've got an HDMI a power, and that's it. And then he's plugged in with, it looks like, a USB Xbox controller. Um, this is all being rendered on computers remotely, and this is all essentially super low lag video on demand. Now remember, this is a demo. These servers are probably local, not somewhere else in you know, the, the cloud. Uh, but it does show you that under perfect conditions, it's very playable. Yeah, well, and it looks, it looks phenomenal. I mean, imagine uh, there's a lot of people who I think would love to get into PC gaming, but they just don't have the hardware to do it. High-end PC gaming is a very expensive game to play, and that's part of what limits the market for it, and that's why we see a lot of games that are very base level. You see a lot of flash games that uh, dominate the market, but this is an opportunity to bring some real games, some real PC games, to people who normally wouldn't do it. And it looks like this is, uh, I, I don't know if you just turned away, this is the selection on live, all of this remotely, that is amazing. So I just asked the uh, one of the on live demo guys, and he says that the servers are in fact these are the actual on live servers in the cloud. So the play the play is is really amazing. So we have uh, public relation people that you can talk to. I know I'm not you're not allowed to talk to me. So just talk, and I'll repeat what you say. <laughs> She's right here. She's right here. Julie's right here. Nice. I sorry I didn't put you on the spot. This is this is always some of the issue when you're uh, here. Is they. I like to sneak up on them, and, 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 and just like you're here at a conference, but I'm afraid it that doesn't quite that work that way. But of course, uh, you know, in real life, when, when, when you know, anyone else comes walking up, they're like, who the heck are you? Get out of my booth. But you walk up, you're like... Hi, Leo Laporte from This Week in Tech. Hey, John Spinelli. Online. John, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. likewise. So this is exciting. Uh, we've been hearing about online for over a year now. These are servers in the cloud that we're playing on, right? Indeed they are. That's pretty impressive. This is connecting to our Santa Clara data center, so up in Northern California, a couple hundred miles away. And uh, we looked at the little player. How much is that going to cost, the little on-live box? Uh, we haven't announced that yet, so that'll be coming out later after the show. Much you call that the mic months away. months away. Micro console, you call Indeed. it. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, when will, I know you're in beta right now. When will on-live go public? Uh, we go public on Thursday, right? As the show ends, then we go live. And what will I need to play? Uh, you need to be a subscriber, and you'll have had to have already registered to, to be on the service. And a Mac or a PC? Uh, any laptop. Uh, desktop, Mac, or PC. It doesn't matter how high-end the hardware? High-end, low-end, doesn't matter at all, as long as you have enough bandwidth. So you need a pretty big network connection into your home, so standard high-end DSL or cable will get you connected. How, how many megabits down? About five megabit downstream to get an HD signal, and if you have just less than that, then you'll get lower definition. And you auto-adapt? Yeah. yeah. So uh, one of the issues, of course, that came to mind as soon as I heard about OnLive a year ago was latency. How do you handle latency? Well, the entire core of the system is designed around a low latency video sort of interaction between you're, you're, you and the data center. You're rendering these, you know, these these tech cells in Santa Clara, yep. sending them down the pipe to me. I'm shooting something. It has to go back up the pipe to Santa Clara, re-render, and come back to me. How can you do that? Yeah, well, that, that's the magic behind the system, really. So it's seven years in development, about 100 plus patents around this core technology. And it really is It's about low latency. It's, it's reinventing video compression. And it seems like, I mean, we're seeing first-person shooters here. It seems like people are, are having a, a really good experience. Yeah, all I'd say is pick up the controller, give it a go. Yeah. I mean, the, that's the number one thing we say to people. There's a lot of speculation about is this possible or not and you know what I would honestly say to anybody is pick up a controller try it out for yourself and see if, if you feel that it's you know a good gaming experience you're not gonna launch on Thursday with partners you're gonna do it all yourself 
Yeah, no, we're launching on our own. Uh, there, our current launch plan is sponsored by AT&T, so some of the early uh, members of the system or the subscribers actually have a pretty, you know, a highly subsidized, uh, you know, monthly subscription rate with us. If you're AT&T. Oh, no, you don't have to be on AT&T. AT&T is sponsoring the program, but, uh, but you can come via any connection. How much a month? Uh, for the first year, it's zero. Uh, okay, that's a good price. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> So at least you could, you know, that's great because that will answer people's qualms. If they're at all worried, they could try it for free. Exactly. Try it for free, buy some games, rent some games, play some demos, see if you like it. And then if you like it, keep being a subscriber. How many titles at launch? Uh, there are 23 games on the system right now. Most popular? Uh, can't say just yet. It's still early days. So, I mean, the, you know, it's a pretty full spectrum of things. We have casual games, we have racing, we have, you know, shooting games. And so thus far it's been a pretty even mix between kind of the super high-end $60 MSRP style games and the low-end indie casual games. And so to underscore, you don't need a console, you don't need a gaming PC, you just need a computer, Mac or Windows, that's got a, and a decent internet connection. That's the key. That's all you need. Uh, any, any screen with a, you know, with a keyboard and mouse connected to the internet can start to play these games. And it's on live.com? On live.com. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, really nice to meet you. Thanks very much. That's pretty impressive. I have to say, uh, I, what I like about it, and you can see their partners here, what I like about it is they're giving it away free for the first year. So if you're at all skeptical about it, as I still am. Right, right. Well, and I tell you, uh, some of the names that really jump out at me, one of the lesser known ones, Hidden Path Entertainment, are the people who the first time I ever did Twit, I told you about the, the game they do, Defense Grid The Awakening, which is a tower defense game, one of the best tower defense games I've ever played. I have to assume that's that's the title that they're promoting right now. They're going to have a mix of casual games like tower defense games and, and hardcore first-person shooters. I'm, I'm pretty impressed, and, and it seems like the people playing here are impressed. Launch is Thursday, so we'll get a chance to try it. Wow, and so uh, is there a chance, can we actually get hands-on? Is there an open kiosk so we can see how it plays? One of the, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's no surprise that the, the biggest concern is, is whether or not there's any detectable lag, but I would love to experience yeah, it for myself. Awesome. All right, so there we go. They're once again, abusing the power of live streaming technology to cut to the front of the line, ruining somebody else's day so that I can step forward and hog the video game. This is on. All right, here we go. I'll hold the microphone. Now, this is this is using the micro console, not a PC. What's in the micro console? What kind of processor? Uh, it's our own custom proprietary decoder chip. So it's small. I mean, it's not. You know, it's also fairly cool. What are you playing, Brian? Uh, I'm playing Borderlands, and I picked it because I'm I'm playing it currently at home. This is a game that I got really into and didn't didn't quite finish, and then went back to. Uh, so. That way I'm hoping I'll be able to tell if there's any noticeable lag, but they seem pretty confident, don't they? Yeah, it's kind of nice that they're willing to let you just try it. It's just a, it's a, it's a pretty standard uh, game, gaming controller. It's got four buttons, it's got two thumb sticks, it's got a directional stick. You know, it's like a shrunk down PS3 controller, basically. Now, it looks like it's just a USB interface, and I saw other systems that had a keyboard and mouse, so I'm, I'm guessing that you'd be able to do all of that as well. I won't make you talk while you're playing. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to think and talk and kill at the same time, Leo. Just remember, if your friend is down, run over and heal them quickly. <laughs> uh, by the way, this is a great game. If nobody's, if you haven't played, I've never uh, heard of it. oh no, it's great. It's got this whole comic book aesthetic for it, and um, I don't know if I can skip any of this. Yeah, it looks like cell animation, which is kind of neat. It really is pretty. One of the things they've done is they have randomly generated guns that have uh, various um, uh, powers and abilities and strengths and weaknesses, and it really kind of builds in you this, uh, somebody called it gun lust, which I thought it was a really good idea, because it's just like every time you get another gun, you're like, oh, I want a bigger, better, better one. And of course, anyone tuning in right now is like, I thought this was E3. This game looks very old. Well, the, the point here in this case is, is not the games as much as the fact that you don't this opens gaming to a new market. Gaming companies are going to love it because piracy is no longer an issue. You, you know, you're subscribing to something. Uh, it's like Steam in some ways, uh, but you don't have to have a high-end machine. All right, let's test the latency here. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really noticing any la latency, or if there is any, it's certainly not any worse than you would get like out of a, a Team Fortress 2 experience on a, on a, on a remote server. Uh, not, again, not the most demanding uh, game in history, but no, no, but 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 regardless, like uh, you know that from the moment you hit playable, yeah, oh, ab oh, Im absolutely playable, and I would imagine that you, you know, you feel you feel it, it, it feels just a slightly soupy, I would say, but again, uh, would I would wager this is a much superior experience to if you don't have the hardware to run the game.
Uh, this is running off their servers in Santa Clara, about 100 miles away. Ryan Shroud tried this out and had some problems with it, but he wasn't on the right servers, and they were uh, online, was a little upset with his review of it. Well, I'm sure when it comes out on Thursday, we'll get a review from Ryan and, and see. I'm excited about the possibility with it, and I'm very excited about the catalog of games as well. All right, let's take a walk. We're going to see some more of E3. We are uh, here on the show floor. We also want to thank the folks at uh, G4 for letting us stream live. They have a live exclusive and will, in fact, begin their live stream momentarily uh, at G4. We're going to uh, do a little interview here uh, with uh, one of the G4 hosts. With Adam Sessler, he does a, a show on G4, a web show called, I can't remember the name of it. No, no, Adam does X-Play, of course, oh, with yeah. Morgan. Oh, yeah. But they have a web show, too, that Adam does. Oh, I actually don't know the web show. Yeah, I don't either, so we'll find out about that. This is a nice booth. I guess they're going to broadcast from back here because they've got a heck of a lot of gear. Now, this, this puts us to shame. <laughs> this puts us to shame. We, we carry our entire studio on our back, and, and instead they've got a, a truckload of stuff here. Even, even Tech TV, we never had this much crap. Yeah, you've got, uh, you got to admit, we've got a very good-looking back, backpack, though. <laughs> it's a very fine backpack. Okay, we're, we're, okay so we're going to go over and say hello. Let's... Hey, it's Patrick Kleepek. Hey, Patrick. Nice to meet you, man. How's it going? So the name of your, the show you do with Adam is? Feedback. Feedback. I was trying to remember that name. Every week, Wednesdays. And that's a streaming show on the web. Show on G4TV.com. That's awesome. And to be here live, we're doing it on TV twice this week at E3, tonight and tomorrow. Can you show me what you're doing here? Is this it's, this is, we're all getting set up. This is for our big... Come on, TV show me. Show. Come on. Take, take me for a walk, Patrick. You, I'm with you. you could, they'll, let, they'll let me in, right? They can. So this is, we're, all, we're all getting set up. This is our big web show. The first game we're going to have is Star Wars The Old Republic. It's going to be the first public hands-on of The Old Republic. So this is a really big deal. They're going to be showing us 30 minutes of the game. So e G4 really is committed to E3. I know you're one of the sponsors, but you put a lot of energy into bringing uh, E3 uh, to the people. I mean, we're, we're just doing this little stream. You guys have this set. I mean, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's just we know that people can't get enough of it, so it's like Twitter, TV, Web. We try. We try to give it to in any way possible. So anything we can do to get gamers more about the stuff they love, you know, we're going to make sure we can make that happen. So a lot of big stories at E3. Of course, yesterday Microsoft finally unveiled Project Natal Connect. What do you think? Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. We didn't see. We haven't seen too many of the games. The Sony press conference is going on right now. They're showing a lot of their stuff. I saw one game called Sorcerer, which is sort of Harry Potter without the Harry Potter license, but it looks pretty cool because. You hold one of those things and you think immediately, I could use this as a wand or a lightsaber. So, so Sony's going to make games for Kinect? No, that's, that's the, for their wand. Yeah. Tell me about their wand. What do they call it? It's called, it's called PlayStation Move. And so it's essentially a really, really powerful Wii. It's like, it looks skeletal like orb on the top, but it's essentially a really, really precise uh, Wii mode. Uh, and they seem to be some of the interesting things with it. It's just going to be a matter of can they convince people to pick that up? You know, right. they've already got a Wii. Why do they want a more precise Wii when they already own one? Do they uh, have a price for this? Uh... Uh, they haven't announced a price yet, but it's coming out in it's coming out in September. All right. Now this morning, Nintendo announced this new 3D uh, Nintendo DS. What do you think of that? Uh, let's, uh, let's back out. Apparently, we were interfering with their RF equipment. Oh wow! We tried. We did our best. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a very panicked look on his face. He's like, uh, you guys have something with RF? Uh, yeah, we're using wireless mics. And actually, we were more worried about their wireless mics screwing us up. Yeah, well, so, so we stumped on them. Sorry, guys. <laughs> He says he's got intent. <laughs> we're really messing him up. I didn't do it on purpose, honest to God. No wires. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I apologize. Yeah, we were very. But again, I mean, that speaks to the amount of production we put into. You oh, know, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I go back a long way with these guys. They love me. So tell me more about the uh, 3D uh, DS. Did you look at it at all? I got to see a couple demos. I haven't played any games. I'll be doing that later today. But they showed some like 3D character models you could render. What's nice about it is that if you don't like the 3D, you just hit a switch and it turns right off. So if it doesn't work for your eyes, I mean, this is the best kind of 3D I've seen just because I hate wearing the glasses. Right. So. Is I, it like v Virtual Boy, though? I mean, that's what it no, sounds like. No, it's imagine the sort of 3D effect you get when you, it's not as good as something like Avatar, but the, like a, a smaller version of that effect, don't have to wear glasses. You got to look at it at a very specific angle. You can't look at it from the side, but when you're looking at it straight on, I mean, that's, that's what I want. I want auto stereoscopic. I don't want to wear glasses. Nobody wants to wear glasses. And, and this is a step towards that. It's going to be a while to see that on TVs, but they're getting it on that small screen, and that's the future for me. That's kind of interesting. What else do you like here? 
Uh, I'm interested to see uh, the new Mortal Kombat game. You know, people have been interested to see that franchise. Kill moves are back. Exactly, exactly. And it's much I almost just tore your head off. I'm sorry. You know, it would have been it would have made for good TV. So yeah, it, but any, I, anything for the rating. They already hate us at G4. <laughs> I don't want to make it any worse. But I mean, it's it's cool to see that franchise come back. There's a lot. Of, I was just at the Nintendo conference this morning. Kid Icarus, uh, you know, new Donkey Kong, new Zelda. They're doing a lot with nostalgia over at Nintendo, and that's a powerful thing, and it worked for me. I'm really excited to play all those games. What do you do uh, on your show? Tell me a little bit about your show. Uh, so on Feedback, we, you know, every week we talk about one game, so we kind of have a collective discussion. We recently talked about, you know, Rockstar's Red Dead Redemption. That's a game we're all excited about. This week it's... You know what I call that? What? Grand Theft Auto with Tumbleweeds. And it's a pretty accurate description, but it's a really good game. I'll take that. I'll All take right. a couple more of those. And, and the next time you see Adam Sessler, will you do this for him? Oh, Tell Adam God. I kissed him, okay? Right. He'll say who? Nice to meet you. Absolutely. Thank you, take Patrick. Care. Have a good take show. Care. Patrick Leepak from FeedbackG4TV.com. All right. Make sure you catch that. Right. Thank you, Patrick. Really appreciate it. Sorry, guys. Didn't mean to screw up your production. <laughs> All right. Now. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. We're, go we're still too close? We're still too close? Really? Very far? Really? All right, we'll get as far away as we can. Don't you love G4? I do. I mean, I appreciate it that they're letting us stream from here, so I guess I shouldn't say anything bad about them. But ironically, we gave them the interview that they insisted on, and, uh, and we screwed them up. So I was more worried about them screwing us up, to be honest with you. We, we, we got cheap. These are cheap wireless microphones. Next time you want to screw up a real broadcaster, it's, it's great. <laughs> the very first time I ever went to E3 was what, back when I was in college. It was back when it was held in Atlanta, ooh, Georgia. Ooh, 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 look at this. Look at that. That's Star Wars, The Force Unleashed. What, what's a joke that a stormtrooper hasn't heard? He's probably heard, you know, this isn't the brushwood you're looking for. Yeah, right, that's yeah. right. I'm sure you would be unimpressed. Uh, let me think. Um, Luke, he's over there. No. <laughs> Has anyone seen my father? I don't know. <laughs> so what I was going to say is the very first E3 I went to, uh, we drove 14 hours overnight to get to Atlanta, Georgia, back when it was in Atlanta, and we took a bus to an offsite to see some Sierra games, and off in the corner were two guys giving a demo for a game called Half-Life. Oh, wow. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I was talking to Gabe Newell, the, the, the president of Valve, and uh, Steve Bond at the time. It was back when it was on the Quake 1 engine, and these guys were so classy. Their demo was so awesome, and they had no idea who I was. I was some punk with green hair. They took the time to sell me on the game, and it was, it was so great to see Valve become an unmitigated success and to know that I got just a little peek of them before they were as big as they are now. Do you think that's possible to do these days? You Can somebody come out of nowhere with an amazing game? I think it's more possible now than it's ever been before. It's an exciting time with, uh, with casual games, with iPhone games, and the fact that there are uh, really, the technology seems to be leveling off, and there's more powerful development tools for individual people. You got to remember, Far Cry was a team of like four guys from Croatia, and they're just like, "Hey, how about we write the most amazing game engine and blow away the first-person shooter market?" Who wants to ride my bike and kill a zombie today? That's funny. That's really funny. Hey, hey, get out of here! Get out of here now! Go! Both of you, gone! Go! Wow, they take that very seriously. She, she's trying to... Cure near us. Yeah, we do. Cure's got no place in this world. Kill a zombie, baby. That was the zombie liberation front over there. Oh, my God. So there is a cure. There is a cure. Citizens for the undead. Rights and equalities. Now, why wouldn't somebody want to cure all this, the, the zombies? Some people just like to kill zombies. Some people do, and we're here to liberate them. Liberate the zombies. It's true. Are you sure you guys aren't act... Grandmother. No, certainly no, not. No. Certainly not. Come on, Brian, please. All right. Well, let's get over. Let's, I want to see this 3DS. No, I really do, too. So this what's is, the protocol um, to actually lay eyes on the 3DS? Do we have to, we have to wait in line, or, or is there a chance we can get a sneak peek? Line kind of starts from here, but actually there's another line that starts over there. Oh, my God. It goes, goes around. All the there's a... It goes all know. the way to Reseda. Ah. They're in there. They're, they have them in there. They're all lined up. Here, wait a minute. Here, I'll, I'll give you a boost. Here. All right, all right, Oh my God! Oh, come down! Oh, awesome. here, let's 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 boost let's boost him up. There you go. Come here. There you go. Ready? Uh, right. go. go ahead. Just stand on us, Eric. Just stand on us. Just go. Just go. All right. All right. You stand on him. I'll balance you. Oh no! Look, he did it. He's he's 
He's able to do it. He's able to do it. There you go. So in there you go. You see inside there, there's people. There's, there's, there's three Ds, three DSs. And that's, that's about the story right there. There's one right there. Look at that. You see? That's how simple it is. This is good. This is good. It, look, it, it looks like it's in 3D. Wow. You're a pro. Look at that. OK, you can get off Brian now. <laughs> Brian, are you OK under there? Yeah. All right. He's not that heavy. It's the camera, really. Uh -oh. oh, look at this, we're being waved off. I think we've seen enough here. Let's, let's move on. Do you want to go see the Sony booth? Yes. All right. Absolutely. There we go. Look at this. you got a bunch of people playing with their, uh, well, their let's, moves. Let's, let's, look at the let's just let's take some out-of-context footage of sure, how... Sure, here we go. Here's people playing with their wands. <laughs> That's... If you want to know... <laughs> I can't. I can't. My brain's short-circuiting. I've got... I've just... Too, too many jokes. <laughs> All right, we got a demo right behind us. Oh, there we go. We got dancing. You know, it's, I guess it's a natural extension of the fact that they're involving motion, but wow, are there a lot of working out games, a lot of dancing games, and a lot of herky-jerky moving around games. They're, they're trained professionals. These people are not amateurs. Well, they're certainly, take a look at the screen here. Oh, there we go, wow. So if you want to look like a, a little Jombie the Genie in the corner going mecha leka high, mecha high ho, and you make the fairy dust appear. It actually looks kind of fun. <laughs> and there's karaoke too. You see there's lyrics. Oh, they are. They're singing as well. Not very well. I can't. I think this generation is going to be the fittest generation in the history of America. I think they're certainly going to have the highest self-esteem of any generation. We can dance, we can sing, we can play plastic instruments like no other nation in the world. We were born to be rock stars oh, in our living rooms. <laughs> wow. They gotta, it's Sherrick, show, these, show the actual humans. Back up a little bit, because I, I think it's really fun to see them. They're actually, I don't know if, if they've done this before or if they're doing it for the first time, but they're quite good. Now here's a guy over here boxing, if you look over to your right a little bit. This is the PlayStation Move. These are uh, un unannounced prices, although they will be available in September. Uh, and uh, they're essentially Wiimotes. Although, uh, to their credit, I believe they're banking on the fact that they're much more, they're claiming they're much more precise than the Wiimotes. And that would make sense if it's an optical device and accelerometer, uh, accelerometer in there. He's also playing uh, 3D over there. There must be a camera because, of course, we're seeing them on the screen. So this is, in a way, this has some of the Kinect features built into it. They're all very, very similar. I'm not going to lie. And it, uh, it, it's sort of, uh, I don't think anybody who has a PS3 is going to run out and buy an Xbox for Kinect. I don't think anyone with an Xbox is going to run out and buy a PS3 for Move. It's everybody is, uh, they're doing different flavors, but it basically seems like whatever option you're on, you're, you're going to go. And by the way, uh, keep in mind, we are, we are five years into this product cycle, and this is what they've put all their money and effort into instead of a new generation of consoles. Now, some people might say that the graphics have sort of leveled off, whether we have enough horsepower, but it'll be really interesting to see what happens to PC gaming, where we continue to have hardware advancements, and we continue to be able to create games that push the envelope, whereas uh, apparently... This year, five years into the console development cycle, we get uh, a lot of this motion controller stuff. Chat room's telling me it's, uh, it is a $99, so it is more affordable. Well, we don't know the Kinect price, yeah, although it seems to be 149 is the... Everybody's guessing at 149 right. So 99 might have a little bit of an advantage. You're watching live coverage from the Electronic Entertainment Expo E3 2010. We're here at the Las Vegas Convention Center. We'll continue to broadcast for another hour. Uh, and then, of course, it's TNT with uh, Tom Merritt. And uh, we'll have a lot more from the show floor uh, over the next, uh, actually, 45 minutes. Do want to thank our friends at Ford for making this possible, makers of the great Ford Sync. It's the amazing, true, hands-free calling, turn-by-turn -turn directions, 911 assist, vehicle health reports, movie times, fuel prices, a whole lot more in your auto. Your hands are on the wheel, your eyes are on the road. You never remove your eyes from the road, it's, so it's a lot safer. But 
you're not disconnected when you're in your car. In fact, when I talked to Alan Mulally, the CEO of Ford, he said this was our goal. People get in a car until now and take a step back into the 19th century. They're completely disconnected from this exciting, vibrant world that we're all part of. Now with Ford Sync, you're not. And yet, it's absolutely safe. Uh, I, I, hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. I love my Ford Sync. I get a lot more done when I'm behind the wheel of my uh, 2010 Ford Mustang. I want you to take a look at it at your Ford, Lincoln, or Mercury dealer, or go to the website, SyncMyRidePodcast.com. Thank you, Ford, and Ford Sync. Uh, I tell you what I do love as well is over here the new Street Fighter title. A lot of fans oh, this know. this Capcom, uh, yeah. A lot of fans know that, uh, that my hair is actually inspired by Guile from Street Fighter. So this is Capcom versus Marvel. Uh, and I, so these are the original Street Fighter characters versus Marvel characters. Exactly, exactly, and and not just uh, not just Street Fighter characters, but from all of the Capcom universe. Oh, you got kidding. all different types. Oh, yeah, that's great. it's a it's a it's a fun title because you get a bunch of these bizarre mashups. You know, with Iron Man trying to beat up the Hulk, trying to beat up, you know, Guile or or Mega Man. The fighting games are back. That's kind of interesting. You know, and it really is. A lot of these titles are going back to basics. They say, you know what people love? Kicking their friends' asses. Yeah. And so we're you know you know whose ass I want to kick. I'm sorry, but oh, he, he turned around. Or maybe it's a she, I don't know. How you doing? Yeah, right on. <laughs> I, really, I really do want to kick his ass. Oh, come on. All right, all right. All right. I don't know how well this is going to work once we get in here uh, because our 3G may not work that well. Oh, great. So we're going to get the This is good. So this will give you an idea of what it's like to get the briefings, which is another part for a journalist anyway, yeah. uh, of a trade show like this, is you go behind the scenes, you get a little briefing, you have a cup of coffee, they give you, you know, some cocaine or perhaps some ecstasy, <laughs> sometimes just cash. By the way, you know, did you notice that at the both of the press briefings so far, I want to get confirmation on whether or not Sony also gave away free consoles to everybody. Did Nintendo give away Nintendo, 3DSs? 3DSs to everyone was what I heard today. Why didn't we go to the press conferences? What were we thinking? We would have so much swag by now. <laughs> no, 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 she thinks I'm serious. Oh, no, no, no. We can't accept those. I'd have to leave it under the seat for the next guy. That's true. Has the official surprise been announced? The surprise was just announced. Okay, and the surprise, so the, the surprise was that, uh, what, Steam is coming to uh, the PS3 network. PS3. And, and, uh, and... Uh, okay, so yeah, Portal 2 coming out on PS3, and, and do you know if there's going to be any cross-platform play possible, or...? That I don't know anything about. Okay, I guess that's a, that's a question for a later time, yeah. Are you a programmer, designer, what do you do? Programmer. So you're, right, you're coding? Everybody at Valve is a game designer. That's how we hire, as part of our interview process. We want to make sure people can contribute to the design process. And so my primary field is programmer, but everybody contributes to the game. You work on, are you working on the engine? Uh, I've been working in graphics technology lately. Now, uh, I, what can you tell us about, obviously Valve has a reputation for uh, stunning attention to detail, for the ability to create you know, new worlds and new types of gameplay. And those little rat things that eat your face. Yeah. <laughs> what can you say about the corporate culture that causes this type of innovation at Valve? What have you noticed? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say something that will probably shock you. I know much, as much about Portal 2 as you do. Yeah, really? Because they, they tend to keep secrets in a way that they can just suddenly bring in people from within the company and say, play our game. They'll sit back and they'll watch us play it and then we give them feedback. They want you to be kind of pristine. They want you to have a clean mind. Yeah, and this way we get honest feedback. We're not like right. tainted by hearing about the project right. every day. And you know, they observe it and if we completely say there's something red on the floor, we didn't understand what it was, right. well then they fail as a team and they'll redesign it and they'll iterate it and iterate it and come back with a better product. I, I had heard, I don't know if this is true and you could confirm it for me, but uh, my brother uh, said that uh, one of the things that, that, that Valve did, and you could confirm it, is they would have people play Half-Life 2 and they would count how many and how often times people would duck and jump and run and sprint and dodge and strafe, and if they found, well it's like, well you go five minutes and you never jump once, they would add something in there. Have you seen any of that firsthand or know anything about that? Uh, probably not in that, that particular uh, regard, but in other circumstances they will get the measure like how long you die, how often um, you have to repeat a puzzle over and over again. And so, you know, basically they're using us as an experiment to make sure we think the game is fun. Yeah. And if we don't, well then, you know, we've got more work to do before we actually release it. Rick, the cake is a lie. 
Okay, let's get out of here. <laughs> nice to meet you, Rick. Good, Thanks a lot. Good questions coming in over Twitter. A couple of good questions. Uh, one of them was, I'm trying to find the exact one. Uh, somebody asked me how many times I've been to E3. This is, I believe, my fourth time ever. Twi you, you didn't go for a while. Uh, correct. Uh, I went first as a total fanboy, uh, second time as a wannabe animator, walking around with my VHS demo reel and uh, handing wow. those out. Yeah. I didn't know you were an animator. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's, that's the stuff you do on NSFW is fantastic. Yeah, but so that's, that's what, what, what you wanted to do. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's one of those things. You know, Teller says I should have been a film editor. That's why I'm a good magician, and uh, you know, I should have been a technology guy, and that's that's why I do okay. In front that's of the awesome. Camera. Yeah, and then the third time I came by, by just to visit my brother, but that was back in, I think, 2001. He's in the business. Yeah, he's in the business, and uh, in fact, he was part of the, the team on Duke Nukem Forever that, that got canned, and so he actually just took a new job. He'll be moving up to Seattle. I'm sure he can uh, talk about that coming up. I don't know. Is he an artist as well? Uh, yeah, he does. He, d he got the job I wanted, and it totally ticked me off, right? like when you start combining all these elements together. Uh, the interesting challenge for us is doing that in a way that doesn't turn Portal into a different kind of game that requires uh, some kind of uh, different skill that doesn't make sense in Portal, like really quick aiming or uh, the kinds of things that an action game tends to evoke. The Portal's, Portal 2 is still fundamentally about thinking your way through a puzzle and feeling really smart when you solve it. And, having kind of an entertaining story to go along with it. Um, there's two-player co-op also that's part of the game. It's separate from the single-player game. Fictionally, it, it actually has a place that lives in there, but they're, they're custom built levels that actually are quite a bit more complicated uh, because each player has two forms. For ship next year, um, we're going to be on the PC, Mac, Xbox 360, and then we just announced we'll be on the PS3 also all ship simultaneously. Is there any, do you want to ask questions? Question yeah. time is now. Oh, all right. right, okay, great. Um, so do you, what, what stage does it have? Don't know yet. Okay. Um, I was also going to ask actually, uh, the first portal was like a sort of boutique game. So, you know, it was a really unique package that was part of the orange box. Obviously with this, it's going to stand on its own. Um, in what ways did you have to change uh, the development process in order to allow this to become a, a title in its own right? So uh, there, there were some really valuable things about making it a much bigger game. One was uh, because we don't want the game to become overpoweringly difficult, we could introduce a lot of elements and kind of train the player at the pace that's appropriate for those elements and then start to kind of combine them and challenge people. So that naturally makes this a much larger product from all the things that it kind of showed you. Portal, Portal 1, um, it was kind of the right length to, to pay off the skills that you developed as you played. 
Um, and, and we hope the portal too is also just there's going to be a lot larger breadth of skills that you're going to build upon. So we are now up against our hard out. We want to thank G4 for making it possible to stream at all since they officially have a lock on all of that. Uh, we want to thank Ford Sync, SyncMyRidePodcast.com. Leo, at this very moment, is securing Wi-Fi. He's going to be Skyping in to Tech News today with Tomas Marit. I will catch you guys later on. I'm going to go see what else I can find on the floor. Bye, guys. Doing the twit.